everybody and welcome back to my channel um i've done a lot of art hauls i guess recently and i did a craft haul as well well this is an art and craft haul so that makes it all okay doesn't it now i don't want you to all think i'm spending like crazy and i am spending like crazy i've been very naughty recently but in my defense i am only buying things because there's some great deals on at the moment and I'm kind of stockpiling things that I regularly use or know I'm going to use in the next few months. I found out that the big box craft store Hobbycraft in the UK has actually got a discount that's great at the moment. If you go in store and you have their loyalty card, when you get to the till, if you go in before the 30th of September 2016, tell them you want your 15% discount, 1-5%. And whatever you buy, you get 15% off, but you only get it if you have the loyalty card and you ask at the till for it because they emailed everyone apparently, but it didn't work. So unless you actively ask, you don't get it, which is a bit silly, really. But the girl who was in there told me the lady before me at the till had asked for hers and realised there was this discount, which is pretty good because I overspent by about 15%. So it kind of got things back to the budget that I'd been aiming for. So this is art and fine art and craft because obviously Christmas is coming up. So the first thing I got was a snowflake punch, 32mm. Uh, I don't actually own many of these kind of huge punches that a lot of scrapbookers and card makers swear by. Just because I don't really use them much. But I like the shape of this snowflake. It kind of complemented um, other things that I was using. And I thought it might be a good way of getting snowflakes made of papers I want to use. And I've got so many scraps I can use up. So that's cool. I got these um, Handmade with Love stickers which are on craft paper. It was like a pound for a stupid number of them. And they're intended for sealing envelopes. Um, I like them because actually all my cards this year are going to be on craft bases. So that worked. I wanted another one of the studio palettes. Uh, like this one that I swear by, and obviously those of you who watch my videos will have seen them lots and lots, but unfortunately they don't have any in stock, and my delayed gratification didn't allow me to continue. Um, I did actually want, even though I love my porcelain mixing palettes, I wanted something even bigger, so I got this, which was like £2, has these huge mixing areas here, but I can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight watercolours across the top, I don't actually put the lid on on any of my palettes, they just sit out, so that's fine. I'll be using that in just a moment because I've got some new colours. I got a 60mm Dela and Rowney Goat Hair Hake brush. Um, these are a Japanese style of brush, used for watercolour when one wants very large, bold strokes. But they're really useful because they're very flat compared to, for example... This goat hair brush that I have, which is quite fluffy, these are much stiffer goat hair, and I think they're higher quality as well. These are good for wetting paper, um, and also doing those huge background washes pretty quickly. A lot of people don't like these because they say the hair falls out. That is often because you haven't really prepared them properly, so when you get these, you should always wash them with cold water, I use a baby shampoo or an uns or a ch really cheap clear shampoo to clean them. Always cold water with any um, goat or squirrel brush because the hairs shrink in hot water and then they fall out. So always, always work that way. I got some marker paper because I know I'm under using my pro markers and I want to start using them more. So this is just a £48 marker paper. 50 sheets of it and it's 8.3 by 11.7 inches otherwise known as A4 in the EU and it's just a really thin shiny paper that I can probably make card fronts out of to an extent if I if I draw anything or colour in a stamped image I could stick that onto a card front no problem. Last time I got a little set of Christmas stamps this is the other set that kind of goes with it I didn't like it at the time but I found a use for the little ones and I could always use those on the inside or on envelopes or something. I'll find a use. Um, I saw a technique, Jennifer Maguire, who I'll link to in the iCards. I won't link to her specific video, just her channel. Did use glitter paper a little while ago. So I got a pack of six sheets of 
horrible white glitter paper. I really don't know how that's going to go. I just wanted to try out that technique because it looked really cool. Um, and obviously I'll do a video if it does work. Uh, wonderful, but I think kind of underappreciated Julia Altaman at Just One More Card, who is fantastic and really generous with her time. Did some stuff recently where she did, uh, like, um, let me get you back in focus, where she did stuff with, like, Versamark and then put, um, pieces of, um, gold leaf on it and then let it dry and brushed it off and got a really beautiful effect. And I, look, I really like the look of that, and I'm going to try using that on my Christmas cards. So I bought some fake silver leaf. Um, I just tried opening this, and it flew everywhere, as leaf always does. So be very careful if you're opening leaf. I got a set of Univor PN Fine Line pens, and the size range I got is um, 0 0.1... 0.3 and 0.5 millimeter and they are waterproof fade proof pigment ink archival quality um, I wanted to use these for urban sketching because whilst I like the pen I'm using at the moment I wanted to try using uh, These these have been really highly rated and they were also half price I got a quickie glue pen which Jennifer Maguire swears by at the moment and she used it in a lot of techniques that I've really enjoyed I was going to get on Amazon where it would have been about half the price, but I can't deal with delayed gratification, so I bought it because I saw one. And they're made by Sakura. She seems to think they're great. Um, I'm going to try it out. I've never used one before, so we'll see. I got my usual tape runner. I use the mini ones because I don't have much space. I got some Versamark because you always need Versamark, and when it's 15% off, you buy it. Um, I got two more watercolors because I just don't have them. Um, Cobalt Turquoise Light. Come on, focus, damn you. Cobalt Turquoise Light. I have not looked at the pigment, but it's PG50, which um, is one of the cobalts, and it's a pretty nice color, actually. Uh, I've, I've seen it swatched out, and I've just never bought it. And then Cad Yellow Pale. Because oddly enough, I just don't have Cad Yellow Pale, and that's just PY35, which is Cad Yellow. I have the Deep and the Normal and the Lemon, but I don't have the Pale, so I thought I'd complete the set. I got this brush, which is a Kryler acrylic brush, so I love these. They've got, look at that, so stiff, wonderful bristles. Uh, Long-handled, it's a size 14, so huge brush. This was reduced from £9 to £6.80 and then I got 15% off as well, so pretty good deal. It's um, C40 is the line um, code and it's a broad, so with it being a broad that's a kind of thicker, this way, thicker tip than a bright or a flat would be. And it's got that wonderful snap to it, it's a fake um well, no, it's a synthetic fibre that they colour to superficially look like animal hair just as part of the kind of look of it. I don't really know why they do that. But I've got a few brushes now from the Kryler range of brushes. I've got a fan blender and a bright and a broad. And all my other acrylic brushes are really cheap, simply gold Taclon brushes because... A, I have no airs and graces, and B, I tend to ruin acrylic brushes really easily, but I wanted some big ones because I paint quite large canvases sometimes, so it gets really frustrating dealing with little tiny ones. I said earlier all my cards this year were going to be on craft bases, so I got some craft bases. £4 for 36 by 6 cards and envelopes. I may not use the envelopes because I may make my own. To use up some 12 by 12 paper that I've got but we'll see and I won't necessarily use those whole size some of those will get cuts even smaller um, after that I think it's just paint left I got some Kryler acrylic my local art store used to have a huge range of Kryler which is the professional acrylic from Daler and Rowney huge huge range I think it was nearly the whole range and it's a gorgeous heavy body acrylic it's not cheap but I really like it and I've noticed they've shrunk the display and they've reduced the price of what's left. So I guess they're going to stop stocking it. So I thought I'd get some colours that I really wanted. So I got yellow green. If you haven't used these, I really, really like them. Um, I've never used Winsor & Newton's acrylic. 
Oddly, I tend to prefer Dahlia and Rowney for professional acrylic and Windsor and Newton for professional and student watercolours, and I don't really know why. I just love the consistency of this paint. Kryler is really nice to paint with. So Yellow Green 388, which is a mixture of PY74, which is Aerolide Yellow 5GX, PW6 Titanium White, and PG17 Chromium Oxide Green. So that's not that dissimilar to the watercolour mix that I often use, which is Oxide of Chromium Green with Green Gold. It, it kind of similar. I got Cad Orange. You can't actually match the hue of Cad Orange with, by mixing any paint. It's not possible. And that's pure Cad Orange PO20. I got a Pyrol Red because I prefer it to Cadmium Red these days, even though it's slightly cooler. And that's pure Pyrol Red PR254. I don't like the packaging much on, on Kryler. I don't know why. Something utilitarian about it I just don't like. I got... Um, it's supposed to be Cerulean Blue, but it's spelt Cerulean for some reason. Um, number 111, and that is pure Cerulean Blue, PB35, as one would expect proper Cerulean Blue to be. A Titanium White, PW6. Um, high, and these are all heavy body, because that's what Kryla is. They're a high viscosity paint, and I don't like soft body acrylic, to be honest. I think it's great if you do, like, art journaling or something, but... I, for painting, I prefer a hard body acrylic. I got a Cad Yellow, which is PY35 again, as one would expect. And a Buff Titanium, aka Titanium Buff, which is simply PW6 that hasn't been fully purified. So instead of a pristine white, you get this kind of sludge kind of colour. And I really like that for A, toning the ground when painting. So that is to say, painting the canvas before I start painting so that the background isn't pristine white. And what I also do with it is, and I don't do it with, with this, I actually use cheap, um, I use System 3, which is like a high-end student line from Daler and Rowney, and their paints are really good, and I actually use that because it's cheaper than this. But what I do is I take a transparent plastic disposable plate, and I paint the underside with this colour, or whatever else I've used to tone the ground with, and that means that when I mix colours on the plate, it's the same tonal ground that the painting has got, which is really cool because I see things in the same way on the paint on the cat on the palette as I do on the canvas. And that's why I use disposable plates as my palette rather than using um anything else. And what I do if I'm painting like in stages, at the end of the first day, I will just take a brush and a palette knife mix together all the colours that are left on the palette to make grey soup, paint that over the upper surface of the plastic plate and let it dry. And the next day, I'll either use that as the mixing surface or put another paper plate or some cling film over it. And then what I've got, because I'm now more complete in the painting and the tonal ground is no longer visible, that grey is in basically a chromatic neutral that will match all the colours I'm using. So that's really cool. Um, it's a nice way of making sure I can paint kind of by eye really easily. So it's my little haul. Um, it's a bit excessive in a way. Just to give you an idea, each tube of this is anywhere between six and twelve pounds in the UK, but again it was on discount so I don't feel quite so bad. And it was a needed purchase. I actually have a painting in mind and I don't have all the colours I want in the Kryler range. And I realised that if I'm giving things as gifts, I really want to start up in the quality of my acrylic work in terms of I want to make it last. I don't paint acrylic that often, I have to be honest. I used to until about autumn last year, about this time last year actually. I only really painted acrylic. I mean, I painted watercolour in the past, and I painted watercolour a lot, and I had a lot of watercolours. Not a full set like I now have, but I had a lot of watercolours. But I reached a point where I was painting acrylic all the time, and I thought, no, you've got to broaden, you've got to use your watercolours, you have to use your gouache, you have to use other things. And I wanted to do some paper craft, because I'd started watching people like Jen McGuire and Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, and oh, the fantastic Envis Cashmore in the UK, Julia Altaman in, I think Stuttgart is where she's based, and of course Christina Werner, Star of May, and, and I'll link to all of those wonderful people. And I started watching them with cards and papercraft and thinking, actually, I'd like to do more of that as well. So 
I put the acrylics away and painted watercolour simply because if I paint acrylic, unless I'm using a stay wet palette, I have to get the paints out every day and I'm painting the canvas, I've got to wait for things to dry and it stains your clothing if you drop it and you have to have wash your brushes immediately and it's just actually for a busy person, I can't just come in, do an hour and go. I have to waste 15 minutes getting ready and mixing my colours again. And that just infuriated me in the end. So I actually stopped painting acrylic. I put all of them away. I have a small number of professional colours and the rest are all System 3. Uh, because I wasn't painting for selling things, I was painting as a relaxation technique. You know, I've got canvases that are probably about this thick because I've painted over them, gessoed over them and repainted, gessoed over and repainted so many times until there's no tooth left, basically. Or, or no, the weave is no longer, it's not really the tooth, cause the, get, the gesso is the tooth, but yeah, it doesn't quite work in the same way because you put so many layers of paint on. Just because I paint because I like to paint, um, but now I tend to give things as gifts or sell them, so not quite the same, and I felt I really needed a set, so I got a a a, a um, warm yellow, a fairly neutral red, a fairly neutral but opaque blue, an orange, a very, very yellowish green, and then the two neutrals, the white and the off-white, really, or the white and the grey. And I've already got various other neutrals, because that's what I had in this set, was all the sort of um, red iron oxide kind of colours, and um, ultramarine, and those you know, kind of basics. So that's where I am. I just want to put out a parish notice, um... The tripod that I actually use for filming, I borrowed off a friend and I have to return it on Monday. I'm ordering a new one off of Amazon tomorrow, which is Saturday, so hopefully that will be here on Monday. But it may mean I have a couple of days where I can't film anything, so really sorry about that, guys, if that happens. What you may have noticed when I started was this green painting here on the canvas, or on paper, sorry. That's a piece I'm doing for my Spin Doctor Surgery series for episode 3, which is my Absolute Beginner's Watercolour series, where we've made a background and we're going to paint on top of it. We're going to learn how to do a sort of background and then and then build layers of glaze on top. So I'll be finishing that off. Um, in the video, it's kind of like... And in 24 hours, I'll continue, but it's actually been like a week. But, you know, who cares? I'll finish that off before I get rid of the tripod and get a new one. But I'm going to get exactly the same one, which, just if you're interested in tripods, is from Camlink. And it is the TP2800, and I really like it. And what's really good about it is it has a hook underneath. So you can, if you're filming outside, you can hang a sandbag off it or a weight to give it ballast and keep it where it is. And it's also got a pretty good pan and zoom mechanism. And it's got a spirit level. And look, I can, I can wind you down here with a smooth wind. I'm sure that's adding sound. I and mean, it's not smooth at all, is it? You're rattling all over the place, but... It's got those nice features that I like, which make it easy to paint when you you just want to get the angle just right. I think it's really good. And it's got, it needs, desperately needs oiling, but you can kind of, you know, go around. It's not as good as it should be, but you know, I like it. I think it's a good tripod. Um, and there you are. So thank you all very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. And leave comments below if there's anything you'd like to see me do with any of these new products. And I'll try and get a video together for you. Or if you've got any questions about the colours and what I'm going to do with them, please do ask. Thank you all and good evening. Bonus feature! Um, sorry, this is really wobbly. The tripod that I... Oh, sorry, you probably can't even hear me. Sorry, let me start again. Sorry if this is wobbly and really unprofessional. I was using a tripod I borrowed, I've had to give that back, so I'm filming this one freestyle just for tonight because my new tripod arrives tomorrow, which is really cool. I did an order a little while ago on Amazon and it arrived today, so I thought I'd just shove the whole lot in one art and craft haul video. So I got a couple of stencils by, from, I'm careful here, from Tim Holtz's collection. They're not by Tim Holtz. Tim Holtz does not design these things. There's a huge team of designers that do it. And I just don't believe any of his products are actually designed by him anymore, I'm afraid to say. Someone would like to prove me wrong, go for it. But I'm 99% certain that the majority of the items in his, his, in inverted commas, line 
and not actually designed by him. So one of them is the bubble stencil, which is really cool. And I thought I could use the edges for snow for Christmas, maybe. And that was a 2013 Stampers Anonymous um, product. And the other one is this Harlequin stencil, which I have loved for a long time and just never got round to getting. And that's from the same year. Um, also by Stampers Anonymous. I really like that. It reminds me a lot of the logo from the recent Broadway slash US tour slash world tour of Pippin, which was kind of circus themed, and I'm looking forward to using that for something at some point. I got some Wendy Vecchi archival ink from Ranger in watering can, which is a pale grey, because I needed a pale grey for no line colouring, and that seemed like a good one. I got some of Diane Reevely's paint pens. I get really annoyed with pens that don't write on top of paint, but I know these do, so I thought I'd get them. Don't know if you can see the inside of them, but they're pretty liquid uh, acrylic paint on the inside, and they've got a really fine tip, and they're designed for art journaling, really, but that's not what I'm intending to do with them. And I got some Ranger texture paste. I've been after the opaque matte one for absolutely ages, and over here in the UK, it's either horrendously expensive or has a six-week lead time, mostly the latter. And I've already got the transparent gloss one, which I bought by mistake and ended up hating. So the cheapest way and quickest way to get the opaque matte was to buy this three-pack, which was actually pretty cheap. And I don't actually need the full-size tub of opaque matte. So for the sake of saving space and so on, it was a good idea these two I probably won't ever use, but you know, I could always give them away or sell them or whatever. But the opaque matte one was the one I was after. And I also got one of the very few distress inks I don't have, Mustard Seed, because it was an add-on item. So um, it was like £2 or something for that, whereas they're normally a lot more expensive. And finally, I got this oops, set of um, 18 sheets of 12 by 12 paper. Again, from Tim Holtz's collection, not from Tim Holtz, from the Ideology set, and let's see. It doesn't really tell us when this one was released. 2014. So, 2014, and yeah, if anyone hasn't already realised this, Tim Holtz LLC, it's a company, it's not the name of a person. Uh, people really do think that everything in this range is designed by Tim Holtz. It's not. It's a company. It just bears someone's name. It's so infuriating that they actually kind of do that illusion as well, and they don't actually always credit the designers, which I think is a little bit shitty of them. But there you go. Diane Reevely, I have to say, on the other hand, always points out that she doesn't actually design most of the items in her range. Some of them are her, most of them are not. She's pretty honest about it, and I've always admired that. I think Wendy Vecchi and Dina Wakeley are pretty similar in that regard. So what you get in this is these 12 by 12 designs, and then these 6 by 6 ones, which are just mini versions of the others. Then the even more mini, uh, I think these are 3 by 3 um, and then you go into these 3 by 4 sort of ATC like ones, which I think is a pretty good range. I like the ATC ones for using in cards, and... I'll just show you the first one because I can't be bothered to show you all of them. They're a wonderful transparent, translucent vellum, and I really like them. I think they could be very cool for layering. I mean, you could, in theory, cut out these roses and, and layer them with things. Um, I'll show you the one, the two that really stood out to me when I was just going through them just now. I have a colleague who actually works on birdsong, so this may get used as an envelope for a Christmas card. I really like that one. A friend, colleague, well, a very dear friend and colleague of mine is a very keen gardener, so it's quite nice to be able to have something relevant. This pattern is the filigree pattern from the Tim Holtz dies and stencils, if anyone's got those. I love those letters. There's that same pattern, and I love these flowers here. They're really, really beautiful and perfect for something I need some yellow flowers for in January. Some beautiful botanical drawings here. I've actually got a kind of botanical set of papers from a different supplier already. I can't remember where I got them from. They've been in my stash for ages. So these are a really cool addition. Love 
love that Atlas Moth there. I don't think it's an Atlas Moth, actually. I gave one of my colleagues some Atlas Moth eggs for his birthday last September, and I had to look after the caterpillars over Christmas, and they were absolutely huge. Um, and they're currently pupating and hopefully are going to turn into moths sometime soon. So, another gorgeous one with yellow flowers. I really like this one. These are the moths and butterflies that are in the Papillon stamp set um, from the same brand. This one I really liked with this kind of grid I thought was really cool. This one with bird cages was pretty neat as well. I can't find the one I'm really, really, really loving. don't know where that's gone. I love that flower. I think that's really beautiful. It was this one. It was this one that had all sorts of wasps and um, I don't know what they are. I think they're all wasps. Um, wasps and other sort of pests that one can get in one's garden and what their nests look like, which is very appropriate as one of my dearest friends is currently plagued by some mystery worms that I think are sawfish larvae in his garden. So I will be annoying him by giving him that in a 12 by 12 frame very shortly because I find it funny and that's the kind of cruel friend that I am. And then it goes into these smaller ones, which are just repeats of the others. But I liked it. I liked the fact that it was vellum rather than paper. The normal products in that range are quite a stiff paper or a thin cardstock. And I really liked the vellum. I thought it was a good alternative. And I don't feel I really do enough with vellum. So it's pretty nice to have that option, really. So there you go. Mini, mini craft haul there. Mm -hmm.